Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three.
Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, if you can hear me. You guys give me a thumbs up? Yeah? All right, very good. Tonight, we are going to be first hearing about a story about my first fast. After we do that, we're going to learn about why Muslims fast, and we're going to become ninjas along the way through reading the book out of peace. We're going to speak with Bilqis Abdul Qadir. I'm going to call her up from the phone and ask her how fasting made her one of the best female basketball players in NCAA history. And after that, I'm going to issue a lightning challenge. A lightning challenge! What's that? A lightning challenge! Oh, you need me in the musalla? I gotta go. We'll see you later. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Can you smell that? I am seven years old. It's in the middle of the night and I'm sleeping in my bed. But while I'm sleeping, I can smell something. I get up and out of my bed and I start sniffing. It's like fresh bread with cheese on it and pasta with cheese on it and fresh fruit with cheese on it. No, I'm just kidding. No cheese on fresh fruit, but it smells like there's a delicious dinner happening in the middle of the night from my kitchen. I get up and out of my room and I start tiptoeing down the stairs towards the kitchen. And as I start tiptoeing down the stairs, I can hear something. 
It's my older brother and my older sister and my mom and my dad and they're laughing and they're giggling and they're having the time of their life. And I'm like, what? What could possibly be happening in the middle of the night? And I get down in the kitchen and I say, Salam Alaikum, everyone. And then it's silence. Everyone looks at me like, <gasps> um, I'm sorry, my... Am, am I interrupting something? Am I, um, am I not supposed to be? I just, I just smelt the, um, I smelt the cheese. I just came down. My older brother looks at me and he says, Amin, this is Sahur. We're eating in the middle of the night because we're getting ready to fast the next day. I said, oh, wonderful. I can eat with you. And he said, no, you can't. No, I can't. Why? Why can't I join? I mean, look, a little bit of my company. Come on. He says, no, I mean, you're a baby. You're not going to be fasting. So who is only for people who fast? You can't fast. You're only seven years old. They said, no, 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 I can fast. He said, no, 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 you can't. He said, no, 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 please. He said, all right. At this point, my mom interrupts and she says, I mean, why don't we try doing a half day fast? I agree. What that means is that I would eat in the middle of the night with my family and I would try to fast. That means not eat or drink until about the hard time, the middle of the day. I ate with my family that night and I went to sleep. I woke up the next morning like any other morning and I was excited for the day. I put on took off my pajamas, I put on my regular clothes, I ran downstairs, I went to the kitchen, I grabbed my cocoa puffs, I grabbed my skim milk, I took out my bowl, I poured the cereal in, I put in the milk, and right as I was about to take a bite, my brother runs in and he's like, Oh, wow, that was really good. Anyways, he was in slow motion, and I put the spoon down, and I almost forgot that I was fasting. Oh, it was tough. I put the spoon down, I pushed away the cereal, I looked at the clock, and I waited precisely until the whore time. And that is when I broke my fast. Now, here's the thing. Fasting, it's not always easy. Sometimes it can be difficult. And yeah, yesterday we talked a little bit about why we fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But is there anything that you and I get out of fasting? Hmm, that's a great question. That is what we are going to be talking about today. Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and I even see, what all do I see over here? I see Azima and her cutie little sisters, and Haya Hussam, Abdul Qadir, and Humaira. I see Uzair and Hussein, Mariam Adnan from Ontario, Canada, Maha and Zoha from Maryland. I even see Curious George. I didn't know Curious George was a Muslim. Oh my goodness. I see Jannah with her pet kitten. Khadija and Ali, who's got a kitten too. Oh my goodness. Ali, don't eat the cat. Don't eat the cat, Ali. All right, anyways. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Welcome, welcome to today's program. My name is Brother Amin Asr and I am the author of Noor Kids. We are in day two of the Ramadan Camp for Kids in the first day of the holy month 
of Ramadan. I hope that many of you are joining me in fasting and beginning to participate in the blessings of this month. Now today I asked you a very important question. Is there anything that you and I get out of fasting? And to answer this question, let me go to the group here. Let me go to the group, see if there's any known suspects who I might be able to call and get uh, get a little bit of a perspective from. I'm going to go to my friend over here, a good friend of mine. Where is she? Where is she? I'm going to oh, I'm going to go to here. I'm going to go to Rahim and Rubeha and Arkham. Hold on, let me spotlight for everyone. And let me make sure that you are unmuted. By the way, if you guys are watching on YouTube, awesome, great. But if you want to join the Zoom, we can have up to a thousand people. But the way you get on the Zoom is by joining our Academy website. Hey, Assalamu Alaikum Rahim, can you hear me okay? Oh, you got to unmute. Hold on, let me unmute. No, 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 you're good. Rahim, can you hear me? Yes. Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Are you doing good? Or are you doing super califragilistic expialidociously awesome? Good. No, Rahim, Rahim, you have to say it, Rahim. You have to say it. Rahim, can you say it for us, please? No. Oh, come on. Okay, hold on. You guys, I want everyone, everyone, we're going to go to gallery view real quick. I want everyone to give Rahim. A big round of applause. Big round of applause for Rahim. Big round of applause. All right, speaker view. Rahim, come on. Let's do it. Wait, what was it again? Supercalifragilistic. Expialidocious. Supercalifragilistic. Expialidocious. Yes! Yes! Yes, round of applause for Rahim. Amazing. Okay, now Rahim, the big brother of the family, what do you think you and I can get out of fasting? Uh, Allah's blessings. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings. But is there anything else that we could maybe get out of Fasting, is there any way that fasting can make us strong? Yeah, it boosts our uh, self-esteem. It boosts our self-control. Amazing, Rahim, you did a great job. I want everyone to give Rahim a, a round of applause. Rahim's the man, mashallah. And with that in mind, I actually have a story that I want to share um, that talks about how fasting can make us strong, how fasting can give us self-control. But in order to do that, I have to leave the musalla in my treehouse and I have to go all the way to the library. I'll see you there. Fancy to see you here. Uh, good to see you here in my library where, mashallah, I have many leather bound books and uh, books of all sorts of great um, uh, levels of knowledge, such as this one called Bless for My Teddy. Uh, very nice, uh, which uh, could be found at nourkids.com. But uh, b before we actually read our story for the day, uh, I'm going to spin our wheel. So for those that don't know, Nori Kids is a character building program. Every month, families get a new book delivered to their home. Our books are based on this wheel of topics. So let's spin it and decide which topic we are going to cover today. Okay, actually, we're going to be talking about self-control, all right? Self-control, one of these days, uh, we are going to get it. 
Now, in order for me to actually、um, tell you about it, I am going to be reading out of this book called Out of Control. Allow me to pull it up on my computer. I'm gonna plug that in, and I gotta go over here and over here. There we go. All right. So the story that we are gonna be reading is called Proper Practice. But before we start, I need everyone to say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim on the count of three. One, two, three. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Very good, but. I see you, Muhammad from Alberta. Come on, Muhammad from Alberta. You got to do it with your say it with your chest. All right, very good. Hey, Fatima's mom in the kitchen making baklava. You got to say it too, Fatima's mom. All right, very good. We can start. I'm just kidding. There's no Fatima's mom. I made that up. All right, we're gonna read this. It's called Proper Practice. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. That was the best movie ever," says Amin as he was watching the movie. Amin and his family just finished watching a new superhero movie, "The Great Defenders." I'm gonna learn karate so that I can defend our city from all the bad guys," says Amin. "Mom, Dad, can you sign me up, pretty please?" Amin's parents agree. Karate. Hasib takes Amin to his very first karate class. Welcome, I'm Sensei Kaito. I will pair each of you with a student who has a higher belt. That's what Sensei Kaito sounds like in my mind. Amin, your partner will be Young Layan. Nice to meet you, Amin says. Young Layan, same here. Um. How old are you? asks Amin. Oh me, I'm I'm just five years old, says Ryan. He's only five, thinks Amin. This is gonna be easier than I thought. Amin's seven. Now that you have met your partner, we will begin sparring, says Sensei Kaito. Before Amin can ask what sparring is, he finds himself on the ground with Ryan on top of him. Thud! Look at that, Rayan, the five-year-old. He got a mean bad. Let me help you up, says Rayan. How did you do that? asks Amin. Well, if you practice each day, you'll get better. I promise, says Rayan. When Amin goes home, he practices his moves in the basement. Hi ya, hi ya, hi. Okay, so I'll stop. It's getting uncomfortable. Phew, I'm exhausted," says Amin. Amin decides to watch the Great Defenders movie again. I'm gonna become a karate master. There's no way Rayan will get me next time. I can't wait for next class. I mean, practice for a full day. The next week in class, Sensei Kaito asks Rayan to come and come in front of the room. Sensei holds a plank of wood in front of Rayan. Raw young Rayan, strike this wood. Rayan strikes. Hiya! The wood snaps in half. The other students cheer. Sensei, can I try? I'm sure I can do it. Says Amin. I don't know about this. You must wait until you earn your yellow belt. Please. I can do it," says Amin. "Well, if you really want to, you may try," says Sensei Kaito. Amin prepares to break the plank of wood. He cracks his knuckles like this. Oof! He makes noise. Oh! He makes motions, and he strikes his hand. To strike. All right, pause for a moment. Before we go on, just a couple of questions. All right, we're actually going to be having a friend join us a little bit later, so I'm not going to call on anyone right now. 
But I just want you to think. What do you think will happen when Amin hits the wood? Do you think the wood's going to break? I mean, he's not a yellow belt. He's only practiced for one day. Do you think by just practicing for one day, he has what it takes to make it? Probably not. Let's see what happens. Whack! And nothing happens to the wood. Amin's hand goes numb with pain. Oh my goodness, look at this red. Can you give me a moment, asks Amin. Amin runs into the changing room. Hasib follows him. Amin, are you okay, asks Hasib. I can't do this. I practice for three hours straight and everyone else is still better than me. Why can't I be as good as everyone else already? Do you remember why you wanted to learn karate in the first place, asks Hasib. I want to help good people and stop bad guys. Precisely. You know, there's one defender that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about in the Qur'an. There's a defender in the Qur'an? Asks Amin. Yes. His name is Nuh alayhi salam. He did what was right and stopped what was wrong. He protected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's message no matter what, even though it was so tough for 950 years. Oh, sorry. Mm. <laughs> it's on the next page. All right. How, how long did Prophet Nu Salam keep at it? Asks Hasib. A couple of weeks. Longer. A couple of months. Much longer. Prophet Nu Salam, he kept at it for 950 years. Think about that for a man, minute. I mean, he just practiced for three hours. Prophet Nu Salam, he did it for 950 years. Amin is astonished. If you want to be a real defender, you can't give up. Amin stands up. You're right. Let me try to break that piece of wood again. <laughs> no, sport, says Hasib. You need to practice first a little bit every day. Otherwise, instead of being a defender, you'll just be a pretender. Amin heads back out to practice with Rayan. I wish I could pretend my hand didn't hurt so bad, says Amin. Now here's the thing. I love this story so much. Because here's the thing. In life, every single day, you and I have decisions to make. There's the right decision, and the wrong decision. And the right decision is almost always the more difficult decision to make. Do I hang up my clothes when I get home or do I throw them on the floor? Do I eat donuts and cotton candy all the time and before I go to bed or do I try to eat healthy food? Do I do my homework and try to learn as much as I can, or do I just waste a lot of time on screen time? Do you see this? The right decision can oftentimes be the more difficult decision to make. And fasting, fasting during the month of Ramadan, when we see food and we decide not to eat it, it helps us build something called self-control. And that self-control can be used to do all sorts of amazing things, like becoming a pro basketball player. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this is because I want to call a friend. Let me grab my phone over here. I have a friend that I wanted to call. Her name is Bilkis Abdul Qadir. Now, Bilkis Abdul Qadir, she is the first woman in NCAA history to wear hijab while she played basketball. Not only that, in the great state of Massachusetts, which is good, not as good as Minnesota, but still a great state nonetheless, she was the number one scorer in history among girls and boys. But the thing is, it didn't come easy. And so I'm gonna call her on the phone to ask her, all right? Now, you might be wondering, Brother Amin, the phone that you have isn't actually connected to anything, 
And you might be wondering how I'm actually going to get her on the program. That's a really good question. I'm going to figure that out here in a moment. <laughs> but while I pull that up, I want you to watch this quick one-minute video on who Bilkis Abdul Qadir is. Who am I? I am a daughter. A sister. I am a fighter with the resolve of a peacemaker. basketball player. I live it. I breathe it. It makes me complete. These are the things that make me, me. What is it? Hey, assalamu hey, alaikum. alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Bill Keys, Sister could, Bill you, Keys, hear could you hear video? that last video? I did hear it. Okay, great. Okay, great. Oh my goodness, oh my so goodness, good, to, so see good you. to see you. So good to see you all. This is such an amazing Ramadan camp. I love it so much, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Well, well, I love it, I love because, it because you are you here. Are now, here. Sister now, Sister Bill Keys, I have to ask you. Ask you. Were you, Were you like, like this good, this at, good basketball, at basketball like right, like, right away? away? Like, like, did you just like, did you just like come out of come your, out mom, of your like, mom, like just like draining, draining threes, threes or, like, or like, how did you get did you so, get good, so at good at basketball? Well, I would like to say that when my mother was pregnant with me, she used to go to all of my siblings basketball games. So I'm pretty sure when I was in her belly, I heard whistles being blown, basketballs being bounced people yelling. And so if you ask me, I think I kind of came out pretty good, mashallah. <laughs> but I did have to practice a lot. I did practice a lot. Tell me about, Tell that, me about practice. that practice. So like, so like, was, did, was, it just did it just come easy, easy or is it something that you had to work on? How did you practice? Like, like, was it easy was it or was it tough? Some parts were easy, but some parts were really, really tough. So I was homeschooled and I'm the youngest of eight. I have four sisters and three brothers, mashallah. And so when I was younger and my brothers wouldn't let me play on my own basketball hoop, they would actually get on their knees and they would act like they were the same height. And every time I shot the ball, they would block it across the room <laughs> or they would steal it from me. And I would cry. I would tell my, I would say, oh me, they're not letting me play. But what I realized was that it made me a better player. So alhamdulillah, my brothers bullied me a little bit on the basketball court, but it made me such a good player. And then I used to learn from them and I would watch them dribbling outside and I would try to do every move that they did until I got really, really good at it. And it would take me hours during my homeschool day to try to get those moves, the spin moves and all the cool moves. Perfect. Sister Bill, Sister Bill Keys, Keys, I have to I have mention, mention two things, two things, that, I things that I heard you say. One of the things I, One of the things I heard you say is you talked about your brothers and your... You talked about your brothers, about your brothers and I imagine your sisters, sisters too. too. Sometimes, Sometimes, especially when, especially when we're kids, our relationship, our relationship with our brother and sister can be like, tough. My brother, like my brother, oh my goodness, oh my he goodness, gave me such a hard time when I was a kid, but now he's, but now my, he's best my best friend. And I am who I am because, am because of that. And I really, and I really appreciate, appreciate how you talk about how your brothers helped you become, helped you the, become the person you are. But I also but heard, I also you, heard, say heard you say that you that spent, you spent sometimes, sometimes three hours, hours working at it. Um, um, there's many, There's people, many in people in our audience that want to become, want to become a professional soccer player, professional, player, professional, professional basketball, basketball player, player, maybe a professional, maybe a professional storyteller. Story no, no, I'm kidding. Probably, probably nobody. nobody. But anyways, but anyways Sister, Sister Bill Keys, Bill Keys what, advice what advice would you give them? How does someone, how does like, someone like go from go being from a decent player, player to being to someone being who's, someone who's really, really, truly a competitor? Well, you have to have focus. And that's one thing that I took from being a Muslim in Islam is having focus and discipline. And because you know how we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we, we strive to be the best that we can be in our Islam. Well, I took that and I brought it to my sport. 
And so the fact that we have to pray five times a day, we have to, we're fasting, we have to stay away from food. I took all of those things. And when I played basketball, I thought about that. And I said, if I want to be the best basketball player in my city, I have to practice hard. I have to have this focus and this discipline, just like I have in trying to be the best Muslim. So, you know, that's something that we should practice as Muslims in general, because we're told that whatever we do, we should do it to perfection. At least try to do it to perfection. MashaAllah, Ihsan, try to reach, try to reach excellence. excellence. And MashaAllah, masha like, 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 I, 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 so, I appreciate so appreciate it. it. Because look, because look let's, be honest, let's be honest for a moment. For a moment. Five times, Five a, day times a day, we have to pray. Sometimes we're in the, middle, we're in the of middle of something. We might be playing, we might video, be playing games video games or something. Or something. It's like, nope, it's like, nope. Time, to pray. time to pray. It's not easy. It's not easy. During the month, During of, the Ramadan, month of Ramadan, right now, right now literally, literally, many of us, many of us are, fast. are fasting. We see we something, see something delicious, delicious like a donut in front of us. It's like, like we want to eat it, but we say no. That discipline, that discipline can help us can become, help us become a, better a better player. I really appreciate, I really appreciate that. that. Now, now, Sister Bill, Sister Keese, Bill I Keese, I have to ask. You, you were, were the, the first, first woman, woman in, in college, college basketball, basketball history, history to, wear to wear hijab. What was that What like? was that like? Well, alhamdulillah, it's so good to be a part of history, right? We always want to be uh, in a place where we can make change. However, being the first sometimes comes with a lot of difficulties, and I face those types of difficulties. So imagine you're standing on a free throw line, and the whole gym is silent, and you have to dribble, take your dribbles before you take your shot. And as soon as you take your shot, somebody yells, at, yells out from the stands, what are you wearing on your head? Or you look like a, you look weird. Or you look like a terrorist. These were things that people would say to me while I was on the court, especially at the quietest moments. And I would be so mad. But something in me would tell me, play harder, score more points, and show these people that Muslim girls can ball too. And so that's what I did. Some people would actually wait for me after the game and say, excuse me, you know, you're an amazing player, but can I ask why you have to wear the scarf or you have to wear long pants? And so I realized some of these people just really didn't know about Islam. And I was able to teach them about Islam by being good at basketball. So there's no better way to be able to give dawah. One of the things that Allah asks us to do as Muslims, you know, share knowledge about who we are and what we do. There's no better way to do it than on a basketball court or on a soccer field or on a volleyball court. So Allah gave me a very, very special position to hold as a basketball player. Alhamdulillah. 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 I have to ask, I have to you, ask Sister you, Sister Bilkis, Bilkis, two things. Two things. The, first the first thing I want to ask, ask you is, is you, know, you know, it's not just it's girls, not just girls sometimes, sometimes, sometimes boys. Are in, that are in that position where, where in they're in a group of people where maybe there's, where not, maybe there's not a lot of Muslims, Muslims someone and someone, might you know, might tease them, them or someone might, or someone say, might something. say something. Maybe they just, maybe they just feel, a little, feel a little bit funny. But you, Masha but you Masha Allah, Allah, did it with, did it with such confidence. confidence. Why were you, Why so, were you confident, so confident, Sister Bill Geese? And what advice, what would, you advice would you give to a young boy, young or, girl, boy or girl? Or maybe even a mom or dad mom or who's dad watching, right, watching now, right now around building, around building that, confidence that confidence in who we are as, who we are as Muslims. Muslims. Number one, of course, we always have to ask Allah for strength. If I didn't pray my five salah, or if I didn't make dua and ask Allah, look, Allah, sometimes this is hard. Wearing the hijab is hard or being Muslim and being different around all my friends is hard. If we don't ask Allah for that strength, then we can't move forward with what we wanna do. But outside of that, we have to be proud of who we are. You know, we have to always wear our Islam in the best of ways, and we can't let other people affect what we wanna be or who we wanna be. And so it's important that we always keep Allah first and then understand that we're made different for a reason. We're made different because we're strong and we can, we can be Muslim and be proud. And Allah gave us that blessing. 
So that confidence has to come with knowing who you are and being strong in who you are, regardless of who's around, because we have to do it for Allah's sake first. Masha'Allah. Masha'Allah. You know, you know Sister Bill, Sister Keese, Bill I think Keese, about two quick things. things. I, I, always I always think about these things when they come in twos, come in but, twos but, but I think about two, I think about specific, two specific things. Number one. Number one. I love, I love my neighbors. My neighbors. Honestly, honestly, I love, I them love them so much. So I much. Awesome I have neighbors. awesome neighbors. I love them so much. And whenever I and whenever have, something, I have good, something good, I want I want everyone, everyone to have it. To have it. Okay. Okay. So for example, so for example, when I bought, when an, I bought iPhone, an iPhone, I told everyone, I told you, need everyone. you need to buy an iPhone. iPhone. It's, it's awesome. awesome. Or for example, so for example when, when I got newer I got kids, newer I started telling everyone for the Ramadan, Ramadan camp. Ramadan camp. I said, everyone needs to sign up for the Ramadan camp because I love it. Right? Right? Similarly, Similarly with, respect with respect to, to Islam. Islam, Islam, is, Islam a gift. is a gift. Islam is, Islam a, blessing. is a blessing. It is a way is of a way life of that, life gives, that us gives us so much happiness in this, in this world, world and also, and the, also hereafter. the hereafter. And in the, and same, in the same way, it's a way, gift, it's a that, gift that, that I want to share with everyone. With everyone. And, that's and that's one of the reasons why I'm The other thing I think about is it was a group of people called the Ashab al They were young boys and girls. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about it in the Quran. There were some people who were very kind of like mean and nasty and stuff like that. And, um, Oh, sorry, there was, sorry, a, king there was, a, was king, a king who was a bad king, and they stood, and they stood up for the sake, for the sake of goodness. And when they did, when they did Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped them. Help them. I'm going to pause, I'm gonna pause for, a for a moment. Sister Bill Keys, Keys, I want to ask, you a, ask question. you a question. And that is, and that is um, um, your, your video. video. Okay, your video. Okay, your video. You had you talked, had about, talked about, about you playing a couple of roles. roles. You said that you, said you, are, that you a are a daughter, daughter, and that you and are, that you a, are mom, a mom, and that you and are that you a basketball, are a basketball player. player. I'm curious. I'm curious. Which one of those which one of those roles is most, is important, most to important to you? Right now, of course, being a mom. But I would say that I have to keep all three at an equal level because I have different roles to play in my life. So on the court, people see me as the Muslim girl who plays ba basketball or the girl with the scarf who's really good, inshallah. And that's my, my identity where I have to teach people about Islam by being good at the sport. Now that I'm a mom, I have two sons. One's name is Ezian and he's almost three. And I have Sube and he's almost 11 months. And I have to teach them how to be good Muslim boys and respect their mothers and respect everybody around them. And that's really, really hard to do. And I forgot what I said. What was the last part that I said I was? I forgot. I too. forgot too. I know. But, but, but I, I have to I, tell, I have you, to tell and, you, and, and one, of the things one of the things that makes, that me, makes feel me feel so special, so special about, what about what you said, you said um, um, Sister Bill, Sister Bill Keese Keese is, is, I am who I am, who today, I am because today because of my mom. Of my mom. And I know that, and there's, I know many that there's many girls who are girls watching, and, watching and, many and many moms who are watching too. And, and that role, that role of, being of being a mom, I think, I think yeah, being a yeah, basketball, being a basketball player, player is cool. Being an being astronaut, an astronaut is, cool. is cool. But Allah but subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, says that heaven is under the foot of a mom. And so, and so it brings so me so much joy to see you as a mom who's so amazing, changing the world, but also raising such awesome kids. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to bless you and your family, give you the best of this world and the best of the hereafter. Whatever it is, whatever the was you have, I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts them. Um, now, now, Sister Bill, Sister Bill Keys, Keys, um, we um, have something, we have something called, called a lightning, lightning challenge. challenge. Okay. okay. So, uh, so, uh, just want to make, sure make sure that everyone's, everyone's paying attention, paying attention including, my including my friend Jake, Jake right now. Right now. Uh, we, uh, we are, are I'm going to tell, tell you about this about lightning challenge. challenge okay. okay. And it's something and that I want everyone to participate in. Sister Bill Keys, I hope you can too. But before, before we do this, I just want everyone to give Sister Bill Keys a big round of applause. We'll switch to gallery mode. And we'll and give Sister Bill Keith a huge round of applause. Thank, 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 you, thank you, Sister Bill Keith, for all, all of your, of your stuff, stuff and for helping and for us. Helping us and this was such a treat. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Jazakumullahu khairan. All right, let's do it. I 
challenge you and your Zoom. family to participate Was there double audio on the Zoom? in the supercalifragilistic Ramabarabarak challenge. Here's how it works. I want you and your family, so it's not just you, your whole family, to record a selfie in a prayer area within your home. And in that selfie, I want you to say, Ramavan Mubarak, we wish you a super califragilistic, expialidociously awesome Ramavan from the blank family in blank. So when you finish, it could look something like this. Ramavan Mubarak, we wish you a super califragilistic, expialidociously awesome Ramavan from the Noor Kids family in Maple Grove, Minnesota. All right, and once you finish, upload it onto our website on the academy.noorkids.com website. You have 24 hours to do this challenge because once you finish, we will be putting them all together in a juicy video that we'll be sharing with our entire community. Ramadan Mubarak, and I can't wait to see what your family comes up with. Okay, well, I really, really hope that all of you are able to participate in that activity. Now, I need to pause and I need to tell you something. During the first day of Ramadan, fasting can sometimes be pretty tough, okay? In the same way, at the beginning of Ramadan, the Ramadan camp can be kind of tough too, all right? So I realized that when I was chatting before, I had two microphones on, and because I had two microphones on, many of you guys got an echo. Alhamdulillah, we'll get that fixed, and we'll make sure that going forward, we won't have that issue in the future. Um, but um, I want to uh, share just two quick things before we end with dua. First, I want to share, this lightning challenge is so important. I know that so many of you guys are like, Brother Amin, call on me. Brother Amin, call on me. Brother Amin, call on me. But the Ramadan camp is a family show. So I'm issuing a challenge. And by the way, I know in the video it's at 24 hours. We're doing 12 hours because we want to do this tomorrow. All right. So by tomorrow's show, we're going to put together a video where we want each one of you to be with your families. And inshallah, if you go to the academy.newerkids.com website, you should be able to submit it there. Jake and I are going to be standing by because we're going to be turning those into awesome Ramadan Mubarak videos for the whole world to benefit from. Number two, on our academy.com website, um, we have a launch good page that families can go to to support um, Noor kids. Now, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Yep. Um, we have had a number of families that, no, no, you can pull it up over here. Um, We've had a number of families that um, have already contributed to our um, campaign. And I wanted to just give a quick message uh, of thanks to uh, some of them, if we're able to pull it up. So that is the, uh, that is the website. And mashallah, there's a number of families that have contributed. For example, the um, uh, Muhammad Sayyid Ali and Alia Sayyid Ali and the family of Sara and Hannah from Brooklyn, and the, uh, to the Tar Targui, Targi family from Minnesota, that's Umar and Amira, and um, a number of others. So anyways, um, I do just want to say thank you so much for those who support our efforts. Um, please do consider supporting our efforts. And by the way, when you do, you can get some books, you can get some backpacks, some puzzles, things like that. So please do take advantage. With that, let's raise our hands for prayer. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Oh my Lord, Oh my Lord, Oh my Lord, Ya Allah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, thank you for all the blessings that you've given us, especially for the blessing of Ramadan. Thank you for making us Muslims, Ya Allah, for allowing us to build our self-control, to build our willpower so we can become the best version of ourselves. Ya Allah, thank you for our moms who have raised us. 
especially our moms who are working and doing so many things. Some of them are basketball players, some of them are other things, but Ya Allah, they have made being a mom so important. Ya Allah, thank you for that. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, we pray for all of those who are in need, for our neighbors and our family and our friends who are sick. Ya Allah, please cure them. For whoever's in need, Ya Allah, please satisfy them. For the people who are orphans, Ya Allah, we pray that you take care of them. We especially pray for our mom and our dad. Just like they took care of us when we were babies, Ya Allah, take care of them when they get older. And Ya Allah, Ya Allah, we pray that Ya Allah, you guide us onto the straight path. The path of those that you've guided and not those that have gone astray. Ya Allah, we pray that we're able to make the most of this holy month of Ramadan. Give us strength and allow us to make the most of it. Ya Allah, send your blessings on to our holy prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings on to him and on to his family and on to his companions. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's a wrap for today. But tomorrow, join us at the same time, at the same place. We are going to be unveiling the Ramavan Mubarak Super Califragilistic Expialidociously Awesome Challenge. I'm going to be issuing another challenge for you tomorrow. We're also going to be playing a little bit of soccer and having a little bit of fun. With that, I will see you later. Assalamu alaikum.